In this chapter, we'll be covering inspiration and design direction. We're here in my bedroom in Waco, Texas. I am re-envisioning this space, starting from the very beginning of the process with design inspiration and design direction. This is the part of the process where we can daydream and think about ideas. I'm excited to walk alongside you as you do the same for your space. I'll give you really important and helpful tips to guide you in that journey. This is your North Star that will guide you as you make decisions through the rest of the process. So the first thing I like to think about is the mood and feel of a room. And this is really the emotional piece. This is where you're thinking for how you as the person living in this space want to feel in it. And this can be everything from, I wanna feel rested and restored or energized and uplifted. They can be very loose terms, but just putting something towards what does this space feel like will then help you move into more specific design decisions. For myself, I know that I want this room to feel relaxing and calm. I think I also want it to feel kind of intimate and quiet. Now I'm ready to gather things together and actually sort through them. This is the fun part. You may have gone to a paint store or an antique shop, wherever you go to get ideas, bring those things together and start rifling through them. So I'm gonna camp out here on the floor in our bedroom. I just think this is a great place to think of ideas actually in the space. In thinking about this room, there's one trip in particular that we made uh, that I think I'd like to channel. We were at a hotel and I snapped this photo of a corner off to the side. It was just this quiet moment, sort of dark and moody, but it felt very uh, restful and cozy. It was just a, a place I wanted to cozy up and sit in that chair, hang out for a while. I also remember going on a walk late one evening and I saw this gorgeous sunset but it was through the trees. And so I took a picture of it. This moment feels like, if I'm talking about mood and feeling and atmosphere, it kind of, it feels like the mood I want in this room. It's a canopy of trees and leaves overhead that feels safe and relaxing and calm. And I love that this is at dusk, the sun is setting. So I think about even our daily rituals of working, coming home, and then retreating to our bedroom, unwinding for the day. I'm gonna use this to make decisions later on. I might find that a color here speaks to me. Maybe it's the pattern of the leaves that show up somehow later on. So when thinking about the mood and feel of a room, you're using broad terms and thinking about the emotional piece of this space. There are a lot of ways to live in a home, to design a room. So think personally for yourself, what do you want in this space from a, a mood standpoint? And then gather a few things that speak to that. So given these first images that I've pulled that really speak to the mood and feel that I want in this room, I'm now ready to start thinking about color. Paint can be such a great way to transform the experience of a room and it's not as costly as other things might be, like a, a renovation that would involve more structural changes. If you have an existing space, look at your paint color, look at the walls and think, does this support the mood and feel of the room that I want? And if it doesn't, consider painting those walls because it can really make a big difference. In our space, we went with a dark green that has a very calm, almost watery feel to it. And that was because I felt like it set a really calming tone. It's very zen, it's dark, but not too dark. It's not an aggressive color, it's very relaxing color. We painted the walls, we painted the ceiling because the ceiling is part of that experience. It's really easy to forget about it, but I like when painting a room a dark color to take that over the ceiling and I feel it just completes the room. It's less disrupting to have these dark walls and then a really bright white ceiling. I also loved the idea here in my inspiration of a canopy over top, like I'm in a forest and everything is very quiet and muffled 
and that just wraps overhead. Now, color isn't just the, the walls in your room. It can also be the furniture in your space, the art on your walls, textiles, things like that. Even a plant, plants that you add to a room are going to contribute color. So if you're not ready to tackle a paint project or you just like your walls as is, there are lots of other ways to think about color. So with this dark green wall color, which I love, I think as I'm considering the furniture that will come into this room, I'd like a few things to stand out from that. I don't want this room to get too boring and, and subtle. Uh, I like contrast. I like things that are interesting and kind of catch you off guard. So while the, the base of this room is very soft and relaxing, I think I'd like to find inspiration for something a bit more unexpected. These blue and white pieces, these are just dishes that I've had around for quite a while. And uh, I like the way they play with this soft green. There's something about that combination that I like. And you know what? Sometimes you won't know how something works together until you give it a try. So that's another reason I like working with smaller objects for inspiration. I might not be able to actually bring in a large piece and go, oh, let me see how this works. So by, by working with smaller things, you can play with color combinations, patterns, before committing to something much bigger. I also have this fabric that is really pretty. So there's some options. So of course, a paint deck, when you're thinking about color, is so handy. It gives you the opportunity to consider the rainbow and then narrow in on what you really like. Sometimes you don't know what you'll like until you see it. I'm noticing that I like purple in here too. It could be that I'm seeing this photo of the sunset and picking out some of the pinks and blues and purples. I'm gonna pull a paint sample to be just representational. This is just to say, I like purple as an option here, and I'm gonna consider it when I start making design decisions. It's really easy to be influenced by what everybody else is doing. And I can say the same for myself, I've been there. But the more that I push myself outside of the envelope and think about what I really like, separate from what everyone else is doing, I find that the rooms that I create, I like more. They're more interesting, they're more memorable. Color is a big piece of that, so have fun with it. It's a piece of the design process that can really bring a lot of personality to a room and will shape your space so that it's not a cookie cutter space, it's not anyone's space, it's specifically yours. And it's something that you will love and feel reflects who you are. Now I'd like to talk about design styles. This is another important consideration at the beginning of designing your space. And when I'm talking about design styles, I'm speaking more specifically to the details of things. Maybe it's a pattern or it's the shape of a piece of furniture, silhouette, could be uh, the details of something like a piece of furniture, a wooden piece that has some carving in it. All of those things will be referencing some sort of design style. I also have a few photos that I printed from a hotel that I visited. And what I remember about this hotel in particular was that the lobby was this awesome curation of all different sorts of art and furniture styles is everything from really modern and abstract to uh, very traditional and formal, things that have lots of detail and then other things that are a bit more simplified. And personally, I really like that mix. You might find that you like things to be a bit more cohesive, uh, less mix and match. Maybe you like cleaner lines and you'd prefer everything to be simple and clean and straightforward. And so that's great. If that's what you like, then that gives you a direction to move in. For myself, I've identified I love a mix of things. Now, I could walk through every design style and be here for hours, probably even more than that. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I don't have the time for that and definitely you don't. So what I would say is, 
Do some research and just start flipping through design materials and looking at captions, reading descriptions. You'll find in those places that there are words that will describe what you're seeing. For our room, when I'm thinking about design styles, I know a few in particular that I'd really like to incorporate in our space. I'm going to identify those as Art Deco. I love Art Deco furniture, the simplicity of it, the modernity of it. I also think that just a very simple, classic, traditional style is something that I'd like to weave in here. And then I think something a little more folksy, something that feels more handmade, arts and crafts style. I love that. So those are three things, and they're loose terms, and I'm not trying to be too specific. There are two ways to go with materials in your bedroom, and specifically the bedding in your bedroom. I think you can make a really bold statement and go with color and pattern and something bold or you can go very simple and classic with just neutrals and play more to texture. I prefer a simple bed, and this is just a personal preference, but I like linens that are clean and simple, not too fussy. I want them to be practical and easy to work with. So I'm throwing down these fabrics to demonstrate that. So as you can see, this is not a rigid process. And there are no rules, so uh, I would encourage you to experiment, use this as an exercise in exploring different ideas and possibilities. The next thing to think about is existing pieces. And this is a practical consideration, but you might actually find that it inspires you also. Think about what you have and whether or not it works with your design direction. I have a few pieces that we have already. There's this chest of drawers and it's just a simple traditional piece of furniture. I actually don't think you can go wrong with it. It's a dark wood stain and it has brass hardware on it. So I know we definitely need more storage in this room which makes this piece of furniture really useful and seeing it here with everything else, I think it works. I'm gonna plan on bringing that into the space. Now our headboard, we have an existing headboard. It's a soft upholstered material, which I love, but I'm not sure about the color. I was drawn more to cooler colors, to greens and blues and a little bit of lavender purple. And there's something about this yellow headboard that just doesn't work with that disrupts this calm, serene color palette that I've already established. So I think based on that, I'm gonna plan on not using this headboard and instead finding something else. Lastly, there's a rug that we used to have in our living room. It's a great flat weave rug. It's uh, just a simple black and white color palette, but it has all of these details or kind of geometric folk style, and I like it. So now that I've gathered all these ideas, I've edited through them and narrowed in on a few that I really like, I feel good about it. I think this nicely summarizes what I want our space to become. I think the best thing for me to do next is actually take a photo of this. This is how I like to work, but once I've gathered everything together and put physical things in one place, it's super helpful to me to take a photo and then keep that as a reference as I go. It's a bit clunky to carry around fans and dishes and fabrics with you everywhere. So that's not as practical. If that's what you've used to put together design direction, then I would say take a picture, put it on your phone, reference it as you go. So that's it. Here's my design direction. I feel like it gives me a really clear vision for what I want this space to become. It establishes mood and feel, color, design styles, and also existing pieces I'll bring into the space. I hope this has given you some tools to go out and create your own design direction and establish a clear vision for the next phase of designing your bedroom.